Today I want to teach you about pre-rendering and how it works in Next.js because pre-rendering is one of the most important things in Next.js and understanding it will help you avoid mistakes and achieve the best possible performance for your own Next.js application. So what does pre-rendering mean? Well, basically it means that we generate the HTML for a page in advance instead of doing it with client-side JavaScript. So essentially we generate the HTML in the server and then send that HTML to the browser. And kind of opposite for this is client-side rendering, where we send just a minimal HTML, which is usually just a div with an ID root. And then we also send a JavaScript bundle file that will then initialize the React components and create the DOM nodes. And you might have seen the term hydration on the pictures. And what does that mean? Well, to be honest, I had pretty hard time understanding what that means. And as I understood it, it basically means the process of making the HTML interactive. So for example, if you just have an HTML with a button in it and you click that button, then nothing happens because there is no JavaScript attached to that button. But when you use JavaScript and bind an on-click handler for the button, then the button is interactive and something actually happens when you click on it. And that process of making the button interactive is called hydration. Let's take a look at two examples of real-world applications that one uses client-side rendering and one uses pre-rendering with Next.js. So the first one is Twitter and Twitter uses client-side rendering. And how can we know this? Well, let's take a look at the source code of this page and find out. So I right-click over here and view page source. And right here, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see that this HTML is very minimal. And we can actually see that there is this div with id react root and there is not much else HTML inside here. So this is exactly how client-side rendering works. So for example, if you use create react app to create your application. So it sends this minimal HTML to the browser and then the JavaScript bundle. And after that, the page is rendered when the JavaScript is executed. Next, let's take a look at a site that uses pre-rendering and Next.js. So I have my own website open over here and this is created with Next.js. So right here, if we right click and view page source, we can see the source code and we'll see that the HTML is on this one line. So let's search something. So I'm gonna go and search for full stack web developer. So this part over here and control F and full stack full stack web developer and teacher. So we can see that all the HTML is right here and we are not only getting one div with some ID root, but we are getting the whole page HTML over here. So this is an example of a pre-rendered site. Why would we then use pre-rendering? Well, there are a couple of benefits. One being that it improves your site's SEO. So for example, if you are building a blog an e-commerce site or a marketing site, it's really important to have a good SEO. And second, it improves performance. So let's say, for example, we had a normal React application without any pre-rendering. So what would happen when user opens up your application or website is that first the minimum HTML would be downloaded alongside with the whole JavaScript bundle file. And after that, the JavaScript bundle file would need to be executed and only then the UI would be rendered. And meanwhile, all this is happening. Only thing the user sees usually is a blank page. But then if we use Next.js, every page is pre-rendered by default and the HTML is generated on the server side, making the page load time much faster and the user wait time much shorter. Before we continue, I want to say thank you to this week's sponsor, Dato CMS. Data CMS is a headless CMS that offers great developer experience and user friendliness. And some of my favorite features of Data CMS are definitely first the image API, which makes optimizing images super effortless, and then the fact that they offer a GraphQL API for fetching your data, and they have also integrated GraphQL API Explorer directly to the editor backend. So it's super easy to build the exact queries you need. And then also the structured content 
in combination with the structure text react component. This makes storing rich content and then displaying it in your own React application as simple as making one query to the GraphQL API and passing the result as a prop to the component. So if you haven't already, go to datacms.com and check them out yourself. I also have a video where I integrate DataCMS to a Next.js blog application and we use all those features I just mentioned. So if you want to see DataCMS and all those features in action, go watch that video, I leave a link in the description. Thank you again DataCMS for sponsoring this video. Next.js can pre-render pages in two different ways, with static generation or server-side rendering. And the difference between these two is when it generates the HTML for that page. So let's take a look at both of those right now. With static generation or SG, the HTML is generated at build time. And then that pre-rendered HTML is then reused on each request. And build time means that when your site is built. So for example, in production, that's when you run next build. And the second way was the server-side rendering. And with server-side rendering or SSR, the HTML is generated on each request. So whenever a user makes a request for the page, the HTML for that page is generated by the server. One thing to keep in mind is that in development mode, so when you are using Yarn Dev, every page is pre-rendered on each request, even pages that use static generation. And the cool part about pre-rendering in Next.js is that you are not tied to just using one pre-rendering method in your Next.js application. And you can choose which pre-rendering method to use per page. So you can create a hybrid Next.js app by using server-side generation in some pages and then server-side rendering on others. Okay, that begs the next question is when should you use server-side generation and when should you use server-side rendering? Well, Next.js recommends using server-side generation whenever possible, because with server-side generation, the page can be built once and then served by a CDN, which makes it much faster than having the server generate the page on each request. Basically, you can ask yourself, can I pre-render this page ahead of user's request? And if the answer is yes, then you should use static generation. And if your page shows frequently updated data, such as content related to the current user or content that changes on every request, then you should use server-side rendering. Server-side rendering is obviously slower, but the page will always be up to date. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please leave a like below and subscribe to the channel.